new videos every day. Hi, I'm Dr. Vince Polanzi, and I want to dispel a little rumor here. The rumor is that you're stuck. Whatever your genetics are, that's what you have to live with. It ain't true. Truth, your genes are, let's call them your deck of cards. You can play that hand any way that you want. Why is it that people with the same genetics look different, feel a bit different, have different outcomes? It's because of the way the genes are treated. You can't change your genetics yet. It's probably coming. But what you can do is change the expression. It's no longer a world where a yellow flower and a blue flower make a purple flower. That was called Mendelian genetics. And there's a little truth to the old Mendelian idea that you combine one with another and you get a third. But that's not all there is to it. There's a lot to be said for how those genes are treated. Let's take obesity for example. There are no fat genes. It's how you treat your genetics, what they're exposed to. The foods that you eat, the exercise that you get, the stimulus that they're ex exposed to, your genes express something different depending on their, how they're treated. Haven't you ever seen people who look healthy at one point in their life and then you see them again years later and they've gained several pounds and they don't look like they feel very good and they, in fact they don't look good, they look different? It's the same genetics. Time after time we see people that don't take care of themselves and create disease. We see people that take care of themselves and they can create health. But it's more than that. Obesity isn't just a genetic thing. Yes, there are certain genetic patterns, there are certain collections of genes that if you treat them in a certain way can make it easier for some people over others to gain weight, but it's not a given. Just because your parents were heavy doesn't mean you're heavy. Just because something in your family history is present doesn't mean that you have to deal with it. Obesity, diabetes, whatever you want to bring up as a possible example. Genetics are now called genomics because scientists now understand that it's not one plus one equaling two. What it is is a combination of genes that are read just like a book. Being exposed to different things, you get different outcomes. Think about that. Depending on how you take care of yourself, what you're exposed to, you can be a completely different person. Your genomics are your book. Your genomics are your information. Your body looks to your DNA to make things to be used in the body, to make you, to assemble what is going to become you, to assemble things that are used by your body. So if you make the right choices, and if you are careful what you expose yourself to, you'll get a better outcome. But if you don't take the time and the care to watch out for these things, then you create a different situation. So obesity, let's take that as an example. If you're overweight, it's not because of your genetics. It's because you haven't treated your genes the way that they need to be treated to get the outcome that you wanted, unless you wanted to be overweight. So you have to start learning how to treat your genes. Everybody's an individual. We all respond differently. You can't blame things on other people, on your family, whatever. Your parents gave you genes, and the outcome that you have is because of what you've done. Now, this isn't about blame, but it is about taking responsibility. You may have been exposed to something that you didn't know about. You may have done something unintentional. Somebody may have done something unintentional to you, and you're reaping the result, whether it's a reward or a punishment. But you can turn it around in most cases. In fact, if you're given the, enough time, probably in all cases. So when we talk about genomics, we talk about treating a certain collection of genes in a certain way to get a certain outcome. And as we learn more about genomics, 
we get more and more control over the outcome. What that literally means is what you eat, your activities, how you take care of yourself will produce a different person depending on how you change that expression, or how you change the treatment for the expression. So you can't change your genes, but you have a lot of control over genetic expression. Even the U.S. government says that at least 66% of the picture is up to you. Only 25 to 33% is actually hardwired in your genetics. So there is a part of that, but you have an awful lot of control. You have a lot of choice over who you're going to be, how you're going to feel, and what your capabilities are. I'm a running coach. How is it that we can take somebody who can barely make around the block and in about six months time, have them capable of doing a 26.1 mile race? It's not their genetics. It's the fact that they conditioned themselves. They treated themselves to perhaps the right foods. They went through a routine where they grew new mitochondria, where the mitochondria became more efficient, and they were able to cover 26 miles when they couldn't even make a mile in the beginning. It's all about conditioning. Let me give you another example. In our office, we actually do some physiological testing. And when I test people at rest, I can tell how many calories they burn, and I can have a pretty good idea what they burn, whether it's fat or carbohydrate. When I take somebody who is, let's call them a carbohydrate burner, and I have them exercise in the right way, I can shift them to a fat burning physiology. It's not genetic. It was a matter of getting them to do the right exercise and perhaps changing their diet a little bit. In fact, when I train or test some triathletes who are in the middle of training or let's say a marathoner as well, I'll test them and I'll find that they're burning almost 100% fat at rest. They're just sitting in a chair burning fat. It's not because of their genetics. It's because they're out there training every day. And they literally have forced their body into a fat burning physiology. They made a physiological shift. They didn't change their genetics. They changed how they treated their genes. So for all you people out there that are overweight and you think it's because of your genetics, it's not. It's under your control. That's the good news. So stop blaming genes. Stop blaming parents. Stop blaming the fast food companies. Stop blaming. Just take the responsibility get on the road. For those of you who don't feel good, you've got fatigue, you've got problems, there are solutions. The solutions are in treating your genetics the way they need to be treated to get the outcome that you want. The beauty of it is you have control. You have the ability, you have the capability. You have the potential. Nobody knows how good you could be until you actually get out there and do it. And you can develop things, abilities, and health that you don't even have now. It's not hardwired. It's truly up to you. It's your choice. It's not easy all the time. It takes work. You have to dedicate yourself to it. You have to put yourself as a priority. You have to not let the reality of getting things done get in the way. You have to make yourself a priority. Until you do that, you're going to live with what you're living with right now. If you're happy with that, more power to you. But if you'd like some changes, they're there for you to make. And nobody's going to make them for you. So the exciting part about the new science of genomics, especially nutrigenomics, is that you can change who you are by how you treat your genes. It's up to you. Thanks for listening. This is Dr. Vince Balanzi. If you need some help, contact a clinical nutritionist. One of the new exciting sciences is nutrigenomics, and we're finding just how much we can do by changing the nutrients that we expose our genes to and getting a different result. Thank you.
Oh, 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 oh.